The Q presents On the Ground. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hello, I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle Media, The Cube, and we are here for in, in the, at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco for the special exclusive press event with Andy Jassy, and the special announcement was Pat Gelsing, the CEO of VMware, announcing what, in my opinion, is probably the biggest, most historic uh, announcement in the industry, and certainly for VMware, as the future migration to the cloud, migration of the next generation infrastructure continues. Uh, it's a big, significant announcement, exclusive. I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Andy and Pat shortly, but I had a chance to grab the chief architect of this deal, one of the many, but the lead EVP and general manager, so I want to answer Raghu Ragam. Raghu Aram, welcome uh, to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for spending the time. Great to see you. Thanks. So, Raghu, you're you're an old timer VMware, but now you're also architecting what looks to be the bridge to the future for VMware. Um, this relationship with AWS, Amazon Web Services, puts VMware in the cloud, the best, the best, most functional, best, biggest public cloud and most robust capabilities mm -hmm. immediately in Amazon, available mid 2017, but this is a path instantly for all VMware customers. Um, what's, when did this all start and what motivated you to architect this? Yeah, I mean, um, as you recall, the past VMworld, we announced our cross-cloud architecture and the idea that customers, enterprise customers want choice with control, right? The legwork for that was done um, over a year ago, right, when we Internally, we finalized our strategy to enable our platform to run in multiple different uh, uh, clouds, such as our VCAN partner network and IBM and now AWS. So that's when we all started around this. But the key idea here is for customers that are increasingly putting a variety of workloads from the, in their private cloud, in their public cloud, you want to have a consistent way of running and managing and securing and operating these applications. And as you just pointed out, one of the biggest uh, uh, cloud providers for our customer is uh, AWS. And so this was a natural partnership from that point of view. So one of my favorite tweets out there was from, you know, obviously Dave Vellante, co-host of theCUBE. He said, um, please allow me to translate. He was translating, I'm from, from a customer, we're going to talk yep. about customer impact. One, you've squeezed the blood from the data center stone with virtualization. You've done all you can. This is my customer translation. Two, you have um, a legacy amount of VMware processes and procedures and software, AKA VMware. Uh -huh. Three, you're jonesing for the agility and innovation of AWS. Come on in, the water's nice and warm. So yep. essentially, he's kind of you know, tongue in cheek, but you know, the data center has, has, has been maxed out, so data center consolidation, certainly people don't want to be in the data center business, but they want the benefits of a data center with the cloud. You guys are not providing that. What is the impact to customers? Because they are jonesing for innovation. Mm -hmm. They're jonesing for microservices, they're jonesing for cloud native, they're jonesing for the, some of the goodness that Amazon has shown works, but yet, it's a huge migration nightmare. Yeah. And they want a SaaS business model, they want a SaaS company. This is the digital transformation. What is the impact of customers? Yeah, I mean, it ultimately comes down to simplicity and agility, right? And the, there is a, two big transformations going on. One is, uh, there is a huge data center transformation going on, driven by simplicity, driven by software. And that is the whole software-defined data center. While you're absolutely right, many of our customers have maxed out the server virtualization, but their network is inefficient and the storage is inefficient, et cetera, et cetera. So the software-defined data center is one of the moves they are making. Now, at the same time, like you said, they are jonesing for all these advanced services uh, for their new applications, and they want some way to bridge both environments. And that's where this uh, service uh, hits the sweet spot, if you will, right? Now, without replatforming, without changing your operational models, like your quote that you, the tweet that you quoted, without changing any of your operational models, you can have an agile, on-demand VMware data center, and what's running in that VMware data center is the full software-defined data center stack, all of the great security and manageability capabilities of networking, of NSX, of virtual SAN, of vSphere, at the same time connecting to all these great services that AWS provides. It's really a best of both worlds story. So the, from a customer standpoint, if I get this right, there's a big 
you know, breathing out, oh, finally. Yes. I got to run against. I don't have to do all this heavy lifting to move my VMware to the cloud. Exactly. One. Two, in the demo, they were showing vCenter. So yep. specifically, under the hood, what is running in the full stack? You, I mentioned vMotion, I heard vMotion mentioned. Is it all, all of the entire VMware stack running on the cloud? Yes, so the stack that's powering that, that you saw in the demo, is uh, Virtual SAN, virtualizing the storage underneath, um, NSX, providing the network virtualization, and of course, vSphere. That's the core infrastructure stack. And in order to manage an ESX nodes for the hypervisor, in order to manage ESX and control these resource pools and so on, you have the vSphere functionality built into vCenter. And that was a key requirement, design requirement for this uh, service, is customers are very, very familiar with vCenter. They've been operating it for 15 years. And, and there's a huge ecosystem of tools, operational tools, backup tools, security tools, you name it, built around vCenter. And all of that had to work seamlessly in the cloud. And that's why vCenter is so important. To this and the vSAN certainly got a lot helps with the storage side of it. You mentioned networking. How does the Amazon relationship and the, the, the co-locating, if you want co-locating, but running, manage in AWS, help on the networking? Because in the demo, it was very cool besides the pay by credit card and pay by you know, VMware account, was the fact that you can pick a global footprint instantly, which yep. means, and from what I took away, was that I can be up and running in a geography with networking yep. in the cloud, yep. but not just Amazon's networking, you're networking. Absolutely. That's you, that accurate. You got it right. So um, Amazon obviously has got a global network fabric that powers their uh, services. And uh, so you can stand up these clusters of uh, uh, STDC hardware, if you will, on any one of their data centers in the fullness of time, maybe not on day one. And NSX already has the capability to connect across STDC clusters across different data centers. So now you can stretch a logical network um, and have literally applications in a Portland data center of AWS and uh, applications yeah. in the Virginia data center of AWS and applications in their London data center all tied together by a logical network. All right, so I'm going to ask some hard questions and now. Instantaneously, by the way. So here's the hard question. So here's the hard question. So Paul Moritz and Joe Tucci, no longer involved, Moritz retired, Tucci retired, had wanted to own the enterprise. The private cloud was the original thing. Amazon was just kind of you know, getting strong lift at that time. The world has gone all hybrid. There's a lot of hybrid cloud going around, so the world's different from them. So I want to get your comments on where the private cloud has came from to this reality. And two, comment to the naysayers out that I've heard some tweets like, oh, RIP VMware, they rang the bell, they tapped out, they capitulated. Talk about those two dynamics. Private cloud, that vision uh, from Moritz and Gelsen, uh, Tucci, and how do you answer the critics who say, oh, they capitulated VMware's toast. Yeah, so um, both of them, uh, I would say, uh, are significantly incorrect views of how you look at this. The private cloud is still very strong, right? And uh, we've got customers deploying the private cloud, uh, literally every large enterprise that we talk to, and we've got the leading share when it comes to private cloud deployments. And along with the Pivotal Cloud Foundry, we can offer not just the infrastructure services of a private cloud, but also the application platform services of the private cloud. And the private cloud exists for lots of different reasons. It could be regulation, it could be- It's not, John. The data. Private cloud is not going away anytime yeah, exactly. soon. Exactly. What this allows customers to do is really get a hybrid that combines the best of uh, a VMware environment and the best of an AWS environment. And that's really what's unique. And what is in the service is the full VMware stack. And you got to remember that 95% of our customers are still largely on vSphere. They've just started deploying and adopting NSX and Virtual SAN. By adopting this service, they automatically get upgraded to the full uh, power of network virtualization and storage virtualization and of course. So you see this as an expansion of the business model, not anything. Exactly, I see this as a complete expansion of the business model. And that's going to come from SaaS apps or? Yep. So the whole service is a managed service. So customers do not have to learn how to sort of re-architect their data center. They can just get a re-architected data center on demand wherever they want. Or they can build the re-architected data center by themselves and connect it all up, right? A hey, final question. Obviously, um, I'd love to chat more about what it's like to cut this deal with Amazon. Fan of both of you guys. Um, actually, we use Amazon. We're a customer. Um, 
Talk about your relationship with other clouds. This comes up with the press, people who are you know, not as deep on, on, the, on the industry. They talk about IBM, oh, it's IBM and Azure. Azure, we can see that as a competitive thing. I don't want to, want to go there because we're going to do a whole blog post on the impact of Microsoft, which I think is the big competitive uh, force for customers. But you guys have an open cloud strategy, and yes. I think uh, the IBM thing is let them compete. Now they have SoftLayer. Now some would argue Amazon, Andy talked about the relationship with them and SoftLayer and how they compete, but ultimately IBM is deep with you guys. They're adding 20,000 developers, I think million people, four million people trained, yep. highly integrated with VMware. So your strategy with them is the same, right? But primarily as a service operating on Amazon. Yep. Are you guys going to be operating on soft layer and blue mix as well in a similar fashion so um, the service that we announced uh, last month with IBM is a service that IBM is managing and operating right and we have worked very closely with them the VMware Cloud Foundation that's just their the business technology. model they're going to operate that you Correct. guys will operate the AWS cloud we operate the VMware cloud I mean, yeah, on VMware AWS cloud. right Got it. and uh, IBM operates that service but we go to market together with IBM on their service, right? And we work very closely with them. So this is a choice services. thing for you guys. Exactly. It has nothing to do with picking a better part, I'll even use the word primary, but. I mean, like Pat talked about uh, in the Q&A session, we've got lots of customers that are customers of AWS. And for them, the first choice might be the VMware Cloud on AWS. We've equally got a lot of customers that are customers of IBM and for them, and software. And for them, uh, the, the choice would be running their applications on the IBM Cloud with the uh, vCloud. Uh, Raghu, thanks company. for taking the time to speak with us. I'll give you the final word. Not on the business side, because it's pretty obvious it's a win-win on the business yeah. side. What is the coolest technical, under the hood, thing about this deal that people should know about? I think what AWS has engineered to build the service and how we are taking advantage of it for delivering an elastic data centers across the globe is going to be very, very cool once we can talk more about it uh, in a public domain. Raghu, he's the head of vice president. Great to see you. Uh, Thank you. Chief architect of this deal, among many other things at VMware, well known within the industry. Legend in the uh, VMware community. Thanks for joining it's us been around. here it's on the yeah. non-live queue, but we're here in San Francisco for the exclusive announcement of the AWS VMware relationship, partnership, integration. A lot of, a lot of goodness there. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.